ahead of myself. Sorry. <laughs> I took a, about a three week break from doing this podcast. Um, I actually, yeah. I got COVID, which was super fun. <laughs> Sarcasm included. That's crazy. Yeah. And, um, in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you will see a website and I'm proud to announce that our first sponsor is Swindler Effects. Nice. Um, if you go to swindlereffects.com, you can use Don't You Fret as a coupon code and get 10% off your order. Awesome. I get to be that cheesy guy that reads his sponsors and stuff now. That's great. I know. It's fun. It makes me feel <laughs> better, you know? Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, dude, how are you? Good, man. Good. Just been writing a lot of music. Are you are you using Twitch as an outlet to like write your like your main material? Like are you basically are we watching like night versus riffs unfold before our eyes? Um sometimes sort of. So basically I I started Twitch in like April. So once all this stuff kind of started going down like quarantine wise, I it's always something I wanted to do. Like I was always interested in doing like Twitch streaming and stuff like that, but I always kind of just like put it off and just never actually did it and so once all this stuff kind of happened and like i knew we were gonna be home and like everyone was kind of home i was just like oh yeah i'll start this up and like kind of check it out see what's up with it and i'm always writing anyway so like for me like i wake up i open logic i have some coffee or whatever and i'll just start writing something usually that's like kind of how i went and night versus um we've been writing for our next record for a while now probably about two years um just kind of like you know, every time we have ideas, we'll start doing demos of it. And Twitch is kind of like a, I kind of make it a challenge for myself now. So the whole thing I do is I try to write a song start to finish on every stream. So it's kind of like, you're a madman. Like I've, I've done like 42 songs or something on there now, which uh, it's not, I'm not trying to go for like quantity over quality or anything like that. Like I try my best to write like the best stuff I can within that time frame, but I try to keep it like, you know, I'll start a song. Sometimes I'll start with a riff before I start the stream, but most of the time I'm writing from scratch and uh, I program drums and like all that kind of stuff as I go. And uh, yeah, so Night Versus, sometimes I'll write something on there that ends up being like, it could be for Night Versus and then I'll right. send it to like, the guys. Right, like similar of how like, I can write a lot of material, but only some of it would be era because it's that, yeah. right, yeah. Like you have like a certain sound or style you're trying to go for for your actual like band like that, and I think with Night Versus is very collaborative. So oh, okay, it's yeah, not yeah. it's not really so much me writing Night Versus songs as much as it is like I'll have a riff here and there, and then Eric, our drummer, will have like skeletons of ideas. I'm super envious kinda, like, of that, that because Era has always been like everyone in their rooms with tabs, and we just bring stuff to the table and we use it or we don't. The, you guys use Guitar Pro? <laughs> Tabit? Have you ever heard of Tabit? Tabit! Yes! yes. <laughs> I hate it. I despise I it. I love hearing Tabit. Uh, Tabit is my shit. We all, we all use Tabit in that versus. Really? Yeah. But you pre-pro everything. We've been using everything. it for years. Yeah, but Eric programs his drums in Tabit. So does then, Alex. Uh, yeah. Yeah, dude, that rules that you guys use Tabit. That's so cool. Uh, the, um, the furthest I've program. seen Tabit taken is JB from August Burns Red. Are you aware of his Tabit skills? No. He will make separate tracks of guitars, like three of them, and differ the volume to make delay. Oh shit! Like he's a psycho. Okay. Like no one That's needs pretty that. Crazy. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. Like I don't need delay on my guitar tab file, but <laughs> got it. I hate the program yeah, yeah. though. I mean, it's definitely the simplified version of like Guitar Pro, and a lot of like there's a lot of things that you know. In terms of like actually tabbing stuff out and like hearing it back, it's pretty much the same thing. But the amount of details you can get out of Guitar Pro are a lot greater than Tabits. I could like to the point where Guitar Pro kind of went over my head because I was just like, I this is like way too crazy. But right, most people use that, so that's why it's always exciting to me to hear someone say Tabit because I'm like, dude, I've been using that's all I use if I'm gonna use a program like that. Every single error record in existence has been done. That's awesome. I mean, it is it is awesome because like on my computer, I have a, a back catalog of every song I've ever done. So like, well, and you could release tabs like if you have that. Yeah, stuff, like, it the is. Same, it, it's it, the same. The problem is that the tabs often differ from the studio release, sadly, mm. because 
I was about to say our most collaborative effort is once we're in the studio. Okay. So like we bring these backbones of songs from the tabs into the studio and then we like take a collective look at it again and we're like, well, maybe this part should be like a little heavier. Like we like normal studio stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um so the biggest problem is typically by the time we are like going out on tour and have to like rework stuff or we're releasing a tab book, we really have to doctor all the tabs that we've done. Sometimes there's like entire bridges that aren't even on the tabs, but for sure, it does help. It helps a lot. That, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, at least at that point, it's just like scooting stuff over. Or right. Something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not a tab at wizard. Jesse could just like, <laughs> you know, I'm pretty good. Like I can get my idea out in Tabit if I really want to, but you, you, I haven't used it in a long time because I usually use a. Uh, I just do all my drums in Logic itself. So like, I right? Yeah, you just piano way. roll them. I've I've watched right, right. a couple of your streams now. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, you're a bit of a Logic wizard, hey. <laughs> I mean, I try to like get pretty comfy with that program. It's the only one I've really used in terms of like DAWs, but uh, I I started I like on Logic because I had a MacBook. But now I'm a PC guy. Oh, nice. I envy that, honestly. I, I really I wish I was on PC sometimes. I, I hear a lot of different things. Like mostly for the games, to be honest. <laughs> yes. Mac, if you're a gamer, you're not you're not having a Mac at all. Nah, nah. I can't. There's like the last games I think I could play on here is like Counter Strike and like StarCraft. Everything else is like out of date. <laughs> yeah. Or I'm too out of date. I played Diablo three a lot on my MacBook, but Oh, I did play that too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, guys, if you're watching and I'm leaning away from my microphone, I do have a cough. I still have a cough. Um, I'm, I'm COVID free. I'm back at work, but I might have this cough for a long time. Dude, how, so how do was you it? know how you got it? No. Like, was it just through like some rant, like you're just out one time? No, uh, that's me and the lady struggled because we've had a drastically different year than normal, right? Yeah. So, as everyone has, everyone's lived different lives than their nor the like their norm they're used to living. But like this year, we feel like we've really sacrificed and like the things that we do. We we're really careful. If I go out, I'm wearing a mask. Um. So when we both tested positive, we were mad. We were like, yeah, "Where sucks. the fuck could we've gotten this?" <laughs> well, so I ate lunch with my dad one day. And we went to a place that he picked and he tested positive the same time I did. Oh no. Now my dad works in a hospital, so I'm just like, I'm sure that's where it came from. Like it's a hospital, you know. Yeah. Um, so like that's just unlucky. Uh I survived. I'm alive, you know. But it yeah, it, awesome. it knocks you on your ass, dude. Dude, like so. <laughs> It just like takes you out like you're you're just like, um I, I mean i've read some of the symptoms but i know it kind of varies for everybody yeah it really does like i've talked to friends who've had it now and we're yeah. just like oh you had that that's crazy <laughs> um mine my worst was a fever of 100 and like three 103 i think Whoa, okay and i had a migraine so bad i couldn't physically open my eyes Shit. like i was just like it, I, it was just rough but besides yeah, the fever, hard. I never lost taste or smell. Um, I got nauseous. I lost some weight. That was good. The COVID diet. Yeah, there you go. I can make that <laughs> joke now. <laughs> it's always a silver lining. I yeah, guess. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm slim, but I'm sick. <laughs> um, and probably the one thing that everyone uh, talks about that I, it feels like everyone's similar is body aches. Oh yeah. Uh, it literally felt like I did like a full CrossFit workout every day, and my lower back was just thrashed. Um, really weird. Was there like anything you could do to like ease it off, or it was just constantly like that until it went away? Well, so because I never really went to a doctor, and no one wanted me to come in, they just like told me to take Tylenol. Yeah. And just yeah, so like no, not really. Like I would, <laughs> I would take like hot baths. <laughs> And like that would help with my fever and my back aches, but other than that, I was just riding it out. Yeah, that's gnarly. Well, I'm glad you got through it. I'm also glad I got through it, and I'm glad whoever doesn't have it stays that way. Like it, it's real. 
it sucks. Like all the people who are like the death rate don't make sense. Like all that shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I could easily see how this could take someone out. And if you ha- like, I'm, I'm healthy. I bike a lot. My lungs are good. I've never smoked in my life and oh, wow. it's hard for me to breathe. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I try, you know, I have a really tight circle of people that I see here and there. Right. And, and uh, I mean, you just, you have to, no one's going to live in a box. Yeah. And like we do, we all, you know, I've gotten tested once and uh, I hated it. It sucks. Did you do it where you put the thing up your nose? No, I actually got one in oh, my okay. throat, which is supposed to uh, supposedly like for kids, but I went to a child's urgent care oh. and I puked seconds <laughs> after they pulled that thing out. Oh shit. And it was a drive through test and there was like this uh this lady with like a plastic guard and like a full like suit. And I'm like coughing and she's like, Are you okay? And I'm like, I'm about to puke. And she goes, Oh, and runs. She just <laughs> runs into the building. Oh, but man. uh yeah, testing sucks too. Yeah, the, the nasal one was rough. Like I I knew what it was going to be kind of. And then when I went to do it, I was just like, I hate this. Like you stick something over your nose as far as it can go. Like you don't even know it goes that far. And then like, I just kept sneezing and I was trying so hard not to sneeze, but it was your eyes sneeze. are probably just sobbing. Dude, it was so uncomfortable. Um, but I was, I was negative at that point, at least. So, so far, so good. I mean, I think, you know, I think I had something early on cause, um, one of my friends got really sick randomly and I got sick like a few days after him. And this is back in like February. Yeah. So it was like right at the beginning of all everything. So like, I don't know 100% if I did, but I feel like I had some of the same sort of symptoms, but um, it didn't take me out to the point where like what you're describing, I feel like I might've had a little bit of, but it only lasted for like two, three days for me. If, if that's what I only lasted four or five days. Oh, okay. But afterwards, um, like I would take my dogs out and I would just get really hot and just dizzy. So like I was out for like four days, but just like a week afterwards, I didn't feel right. It's like a haze. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah. my girlfriend tested positive and has not shown a symptom still. And she's like way past the clear date or whatever. Wow. So it's, yeah. it really is different for everybody. Um, unpredictable. But that being said, I mean, I guess that's why people are like, it's not that bad, but it just because it's not bad for someone. Well, it's not that big a deal to wear a mask. Like, and I think that's the bottom line of like, right. The well, situation. and I will say I've, I've, I'm back at work at my coffee shop or the coffee shop I work for. Yeah. Wearing a mask for a full work shift fucking sucks. <laughs> I, I could see that. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Um, I underestimate it, but like most people are complaining about like going into a grocery store with it on. Right. But hey, I do it. I wear my mask. Yeah, yeah. We don't have to talk about this though. It's a, <laughs> a crazy process. Um, man, I don't I don't know you super well, so I'm excited to do this podcast. You know, actually, just you're probably the yeah, first guest where I'm like, I could learn a lot about you. You know what I mean? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, what what was younger nick like when you were growing up what were what were the bands you were jamming and you were trying to learn on guitar did a uh, tool for sure Oof. it was like my tool pretty much like fourth grade on i got really into music and that was when i was like really like paying attention to bands and i got you know um i'm mean, not gonna lie like my first cd was uh <laughs> my mom got me the hansen cd so like i got like the, i don't know why but she bought it for me and i was just like <laughs> I know a couple songs, I guess, on this. So I was not cool, expecting that at all. I, I mean, I didn't buy it. So maybe right, right. I mean, my <laughs> first CD I ever owned was Lenny Kravitz' Greatest Hits. So, All right. I mean, that's. I feel like that's a little cooler. but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean. So I had, I, but I got really in the tool. So back on track. Uh, so I got really <laughs> on the tool. I got into uh, like Rage and Death Tones and stuff. Like sixth grade, pretty much sixth grade was like my year for really getting into Damn, bands. man, you were listening to cool shit right off yeah. the bat. Dude, my dad is like really, uh, my dad has always been very into music himself. So he always showed me bands and he always took me to shows when there was like shows to go to. Yeah, but like and, even uh, still, your yeah. dad has obviously great music taste. Like even, oh, for sure. Even now, 2020, like the Titans that are kind of leading that genre still are tool, Deftones. Yeah. 
No, they're like legacy bands, man. Those yeah. guys will be around as long as they are alive. And I hate to admit and, it, uh, I didn't get into those bands until later. Like, yeah, I mean, I have friends that were like that too. I think for me, I had a couple friends that were very into new metal in like my elementary school. And so I got way into that. Like, I was super into new metal, like Adema, like Taproot, all every single band from that era. Like, I was very familiar with Lip Biscuit, of course, Corn. And, um, yeah, so I got really into stuff like that back then. And the thing that always attracted me the most was like the atmospheres of new metal. Like there's a lot of like like ambience and like atmosphere and kind of this like vibe that a lot of new metal, not all of it, but a lot of it has. And the guitars were very affected and they were very like weird sounding compared to like, you know, like Nirvana or something like that. Like there was like more to it. And uh I feel like that might have went over some people's heads maybe, but when I look back on it. I always notice that and I'm always like, oh, this is really cool that like, you know, whatever, especially corn and Limp Bizkit, like those two, like corn and West Borland, I should say specifically like West Borland was a huge like part of why I thought guitar was cool also. So like I'd watch him play and be like, he looks cool and he's like really good. And like, there's like a certain freshness to all that stuff. Um, then I got into like Lincoln Park and like all that stuff too, of course. But yeah, my dad, I mean, honestly, early on, my dad was a huge reason why I was into that stuff. And like tool was my first concert. That oh. he took me to. So I got to see Tool and like, I've never seen Tool live, dude. I want to so Oh, they're amazing. Yeah. yeah, they're uh they're definitely like when you watch them, it's totally different than watching like any other band. Like they have a professionalism and like a whole vibe to their setup usually that looks really crazy. Um but yeah, I love that band. That's like always been like Lateralis from them is one of my favorite CDs or is my favorite CD. Dude, ever. funny enough, it's like <laughs> Air's been a band for like almost 12 or 13 years or whatever but like just now we're we're actually putting a lot of influence from tool into our music nice and like easily like spotable too but it's just like i mean when they put that new album out i guess a year ago two years ago i don't even know now uh yeah i think it was one year now man it's like crazy. It just literally just became one year yeah uh two, we that's all we ripped on tour i think like someone else would yeah. start driving and they'd put it on for them. And then someone else would start driving and they would put it on for them. Yeah, that is 100% how we were too. Yeah. So we always rotated yeah. the same bands. Yeah. And then when they did that, they put all their music, which is okay. If, for those of you who don't know, Tool never had any music officially on the internet. Yeah. All the YouTube videos were like fan made videos. And there was nothing on Spotify. So when they released that shit on Spotify, it was a huge deal. Um, oh, it was for sure. So, I mean, that. They like went platinum and stuff, right? Yeah, they, like sold like mad. Yeah, instantly. Like they had mad streams. And then like for me to be a fan already, and their new album come out, then I just went back to their old stuff because it was easily accessible. So like Tool just became a much bigger part of my life as of last year. It's crazy. That's interesting to backtrack on them because I definitely grew up listening to them. Per, like pretty much on release. Or Lateralis. Whatever. Lateralis was like a new record for me. Right. Like, that was when that came out from that point i mean obviously it's not that many i guess so letter else in 2000 days but uh and fair inoculum so like those three i saw as new records and then anima was out like that was when i first got into them was on that record i'm um, almost so glad yeah. i didn't get into them back then because i don't think i would have appreciated it like i do now honestly well i'm glad i'm glad you can backtrack on them because i think the fear for me of like any band and not i guess maybe not them because i really do think those all of those records are really good and unique but it's kind of hard to backtrack on bands sometimes because the, the recording quality might get worse and worse as you go backwards. And I'm, I'm like a quality this, snob too. I'm so same, bad about same, it. Yeah, for sure. It matters. It does. And I sure. think it helps. It helps if you don't like when you're like early on and growing with the band and like their quality, it gets better. Like you don't really like notice the other ones being worse until you like <laughs> maybe you didn't know them. I got dogs too. So that might happen. Oh yeah. I'm if down go, with it. It goes off. I'll, it happens I'll on my myself. stream all the time. They're super used to it. My viewers. Yeah, same for sure. Um, but yeah, Tool is awesome. Adam Jones on guitar is like big influence on me. And uh, just like his use of delay. Like I was always really coincidentally just into bands with one guitar player too. So like the idea of like one guy kind of covering all the ground. Of, a lot like, of space. Yeah, a lot of space. Yeah. And that's kind of always been what I was attracted to. Well, so when I write too. you're like, you're very effect heavy. Um, yeah. Which we're going to talk about gear in a little bit. For sure. Uh, I want to get more into that world. You know, I, I haven't, <laughs> well, I've been a touring 
guitar player for a while now, but like it's, I still feel new in some aspects. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I got a Kemper like really early on into my guitar playing career, so, and I just haven't gone back. But I got like a new toy, and I want to play with pedals, and I like I want to be a I want to be a dad, you know. Uh, yeah. I was gonna say real quick, Tool is definitely not my favorite band, but the Pot might be my favorite song. <laughs> Dude, that song is really good. So good for sure. That I mean, yeah, that band is super heavy with effects. There's a lot of times like listening to them still sometimes that the bass sounds like guitar, and like it's hard to differentiate like what. Like, cause he's effect heavy too. So like you have two guys that are just like tripping out on pedals and like pitch shifting and wall pedals and stuff. Um, they're always very interesting with that. Yeah. I love it, dude. I love, I'm like jealous. Like I remember way back in the day I saw minus the bear live. They're so good live. Yeah. And that they're like literally tap dancing as they're playing. Like they never stop moving their feet and that's an entirely different skill in itself. It's like, well, and it's becoming kind of lost a little bit. I know, so like, and that's like... that's why I want to get into it. <laughs> yeah, because I I hate like everyone's just MIDI programming their shit. Which also yeah. like we could get into like people backtracking their you know tracks and all that. Mm. Um. Yeah. I mean, like for me, well, <laughs> to touch on that, I guess like everyone could do whatever they want to do. I don't. I don't. Right. Care, yeah, but... yeah. 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 For me, like I've always been more in the mindset of like I want to control everything that's happening and I want to any sound you hear, I want it to be a sound that one of us, at least speaking on Night versus the Half, like one of us did. So like, you know, like you see, like our our drummer covers a lot of ground. Yeah, he uses a lot of synth pads and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's got a lot of that happening. And then that combined with like my pedals and my bass player's pedals and stuff like that. Like we always try to, you know, cover as much as we can as a three piece and not rely on like like i if i go to a studio like i will never record two guitars like i will double myself of course and i'll sometimes quad myself but i will never have a rhythm and a lead because i just like i can't uh, i don't want to go live and then sound weaker so like i don't understand the logic of that because it's like i know well, i know some people like to separate studio and live and like you go to studio that's one experience live is another experience but like to me it should be sort of one and the same. So like, that's kind of where I'm at with it. Man, like for the most part, you know what sucks a as a third party listener tonight versus I don't, I think I just assume so much that a lot of the effects are just like something that the engineer threw in later on. And like, it's such yeah. a lost art that I think I need to revert my thinking when it comes well, to dude, that it, stuff. It is what it is. I mean, a lot of bands don't, do it so like no yeah i know there, or they do it in the studio with the assumption that they're going to run their laptop later and it's going to cover all that stuff so like i literally consider the fact that like you know part to part which effects am i going to have to turn on and off before i go to this chorus yeah but like knowing that, so that is so much that. sicker to me like that's so kick-ass but it's all too, but there's pros and cons too because like yeah. the pro obviously is like i feel like i don't i guess i don't know if that's pro but like i feel like cool knowing i can like do all this stuff it's fun all that stuff but the con is like if i have an issue on stage <laughs> yeah it's like i have to really look i mean i've gotten better at it now like finding the issue quickly but it, i mean i have like 14 pedals plus on my pedal board so like do, I you, can do run. you have a tech and all that no yeah. so we all we do everything ourselves like that we do too yeah dude, still I mean, no tech it's for now, it makes sense. Like, I don't mind changing my strings and making sure all my guitars are good. Oh, I'll never enjoy that. Cables, but that stuff. I, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's kind of shitty, I guess. <laughs> I'm just used to, I'm used to it. Right. Like yeah, that, yeah. Um, like the pedal stuff, dude, I've had issues with that so many times. Where I'm just like, what is it? And like, I rip apart my entire board. Pedal middle, boards like, are a nasty thing, man. Uh, even like, I think way back in the day, Era had like maybe at max like four pedals. And that's like just to get your like, bass tone right not yeah. not bass tone but your bass line tone for sure you have like your amp your ts9 tube screamer your noise gate your compressor like that's just like typically what we run everything through like a tuner and like <laughs> just right there what we're talking about seven connections <laughs> so like yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it, pedals are a beast man but i'll say i'll take a short I'll take a shorted out patch cable over a crashing laptop any day. Right. So that 
that's the thing. It's like you run that risk. So like I know there's like the simplicity of having the live digital rig because you can just put your thing down, plug in, plug in, you're good. Like whereas mine, I mean, I can kind of do that too. I can plop my whole board down. That's also extremely heavy, but I can plop my whole <laughs> board down, plug in, you know, both sides, whatever, and I'm good. But if there's an issue, I have to look at every single cable. I have to touch every connection. I have to make sure like I'm looking at it right now. That's why I keep looking down. But I have to like do all that stuff. And sometimes like I don't have any issues. I've had tours with no problems before, but I've had probably more tours where I've had at least one issue happen with something like that. Well, that's just and, tour. Uh, like you're just playing with I mean, yeah. statistics at that point. For sure. So, I mean, there that is the issue, but I agree with you 100%. That's one of the biggest reasons why I never wanted to go Axe Effects route or any of that stuff is because I've seen a band have their laptop crash and have their entire rig just disappear and then they can't do anything. Yeah, I mean, I've and seen it. Like, I've seen it dozens of times at this point because of all the different bands. Tour. And like our genre I mean, is just common. Um, like, I get it. I get if you're if you are a band that is going to run a lot of stuff. I mean, you need to do that if that's your if that's your like method, you know. But we've just I've always been the other way. Like we always just want to control everything that we can and then try to make that work as best as we can. Same with like that's how we write our songs, all that kind of stuff. Like I don't, I try not to do anything that I couldn't replicate live. We like, we're we're the same way. Is. I mean, like if there's like an atmospheric lead in a chorus, like whatever, that's kind of where we're at. But like. For sure. We have one thing of guitar tracks in our samples, and I'll proudly say this. Like I'll say this you know, <laughs> on the internet where I can be quoted. <laughs> and all it does is at a lower volume on the other side of stage, play what I'm playing so that it fills out the room better. Yeah. Um, that's the only guitar track at all in our entire live set. And it's just... That's sick. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, I mean, we're really proud of that. We... We definitely hate on bands like pretty, pretty loudly that like play your music, you know, like we're a band, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But no, man, I admire you a lot, dude. Your, your playing is really unique. I'll say that. Like, I guess I kind of discovered you after Nam this past year. Oh, sick. Yeah. And I was like doing digging on the Abbasi guitars. And I came across your Instagram and I was like, I listened to a couple different videos and I just knew you were Night Versus. <laughs> and that's cool because like you have your staple, you know what I mean? Like, Thank you. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, of course, dude. Um, actually, let's just go ahead and dive into gear because we're just playing with it. We're yeah. <laughs> uh, so you're playing amps live. I am playing amps. You don't, you don't layer live. like a pedal board in front of anything digital? So. I have a digital amp actually. So I'm saying all these things, but <laughs> I have I have a hybrid situation. So Blackstar Amps put out this amp called the Silverline and it's basically the same exact thing as a tube head. So like in terms of setup, nothing's different than a regular tube amp. So I just put the amp, the head on top of my it's super light too, super light head. Put the head on top of a cab, plug it in normal. So it does not have tubes. It doesn't have tubes. It's purely digital and uh it's like their tech, so it's like not, it's not solid state, but it's like something, whatever, some new. I have thing. the, the positive grid head. Oh yeah. So I think it's very similar in that, like it's a hardware. It could be. I actually use it as a power amp for my Kemper, which is uh. so arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I get what you're saying. It's like a solid state. Like it felt real. The positive grid head feels like a real amp. I use Positive Grid for tracking on Twitch. That's what I use when I'm like writing all these songs. Really, you don't? You're not on the Neural game or the STL game. I am yet? on the Neural game. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I have I use Neural usually when I mix stuff, depending on what guitar I'm using or what uh you know the song is. But for tracking on Twitch, while I have a camera running and I have a lot of stuff going, it's easier on my computer to okay. use BIOS. Okay. The Neural stuff is very heavy on CPU. But it sounds great. So, it does. Like, it's, no it sounds insane. Like, oh, I shit. still like the effects stuff, the bias stuff. I still love it, honestly. They, I mean, there's more to the effects on the bias stuff, but I think Neural has like they have their their high gain and their cleans. They have down the effects and all that kind of stuff. Like, I mean, I don't even use the effects in most of the software stuff anyway, other than delay. So, like for me, I don't. I never care about that stuff as much as like the actual tones. 
and I think the neural stuff sounds great. The Will Putney suite sounds great from STL as well. Yeah, um, I have that. I haven't gotten it to work on my computer yet. Oh, bummer. Yeah, that one's dope. I mean, that's cool too because we actually have a tone in there from our record that we did with him. Oh, sick. It's so like, because cause he put like all of his album tones in there. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, ours, yeah ours it's a fat too. file. <laughs> yeah, when I when I put it in, I was like, what is this? It's, yeah, it's uh it sounds good though. That pretty much that and neural, I feel like are like of the same right. quality. It just comes Caliber. down to how well you're yeah, like how you dial in a tone and what works with your specific setup. So you have but, uh, yeah. So is there a DI on that head? Uh no. So well no. Kind of. They have this thing basically <laughs> where like well, it's weird because they have a USB port on there. So you can plug a micro USB port into your computer, connect it to the head, and then you can record with it using the, the amp tones that are on there. Um, and there's also an emulated output. I don't think either of those are So it can be its own signal, interface? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So it can run as its own interface. And um, live, I use it like a regular amp. So I just plug my pedal board into the front. I always do that too. I never use an effects loop. Well, so, so what I, I guess what I'm getting to is, do you mic your cabs? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but I could. Right. So it depends. Sometimes I'll do that, or I'll have the guy run both a DI into the house and then also um, mic it, and then he can kind of play with whatever is better. Well, right. So where does the DI go come from? Well, that will be, I guess, coming out of the head into the DI box into the cab, right, or something. So he takes the, the, oh, the emulated output, sorry. Yeah, the emulated output. Yeah, so that acts as like its own IR or whatever. Well, so um, the new toy I got is the Rev G20. Oh, sick. And it's just a Rev head with twin torpedoes built into it. So I just run it straight, like, if we can see it. Yeah, there it is. Here. So I just, that just goes straight into your computer? A D, one DI cable into my interface. Wow. And you get that sounds good. Oh, it sounds awesome. Uh, it's funny when you get into digital amps and stuff like that. And I know you know this. Ch changing the cabs changes the sound so drastically that I get ear exhaustion yeah. so fast, and it suffers from it too. Like the the cool thing is I have it on top of a Mesa one by twelve right now, and it sounds phenomenal out of that. And the yeah, only that. thing I'm using is the Rev pedal in front of it just awesome uh sick. and then you get all the twin torpedo irs that you can play with so you can usb it up to your computer put a different bunch of cabs in and what's cool is there's a hardware knob with five settings that you can preload whatever cabs you want on there it's cool nice but that, that's pretty sick yeah that's my entryway into like i want to build a pedal board in front of that thing and really play with it and what's cool is i can just di that into my in-ears like i'd would my kemper because dude real amps no matter what you're using feel better they just I mean, yeah i mean like me and you are probably around the same age when we were growing up playing guitar and none of that shit existed so like right it just other than like a pod yeah, and that thing <laughs> felt like shit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like the, I think there was always like a pretty fat millisecond delay on that thing too, which is so crazy. Yeah, my very very first band recorded our entire first record with a or demo, I should say, with a pod, and uh, I didn't know any better at the time. I was just like, "Oh, cool, we're in a studio." But when I think back to it, I'm like, "We're in a studio, and this dude's recording with a pod. <laughs> like, why is he not miking any amp or any? Like, what the hell?" Yeah, I was like. 15 16 years old this guy's like oh, i'm gonna take these kids money and just yes. make like yeah, yeah, yeah. a pod record i don't blame him i guess i did i mean i have to i need to hear those recordings again somehow but uh yeah it's just funny what's funny is i have that same story with a guy yeah, out of atlanta but it's rick beato oh really i recorded with rick beato when him? i was 16 years old oh wow and he charged That's crazy. He charged my band a lot of money and i feel like he would be ashamed to hear the mixes so I'm not going to call him out and be like, he just like took our money. Yeah. But the guy had already like gone platinum with shine down and shit. And like our guitar tone is not shine downs on that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's weird. I didn't even know he, I didn't even know he mixed like that. Yeah. He used to like, that's all he did for a lot before he was like a YouTube personality and all that stuff. He was literally mm. just, I th he had a lot to do with shine down and some other bands. That was his like claim to glory, but yeah, dude, I lived in his studio for 
two and a half weeks and wrote and recorded stuff with an old, old band of mine. Funny story, man. That's interesting. I, I actually had no idea that um, I only knew him as his YouTube stuff. Right. Yeah, what's funny is I wrote him off in my head as that guy, right? I was like, oh, it's the guy that recorded my shitty band 15 years ago. And then one day I was on YouTube or like scrolling on Instagram and I saw his face. It's like, God, this dude looks familiar. And I like, do- like dug deep and like looked at all his videos. It's like, I recorded with this fucking guy. Like it was weird. It was a surreal experience. You should hit him up and send him those recordings. I saw him at Nam, and he did not give a fuck about it. He was like, I don't know you, dude. <laughs> and I was like, all right, well, cool. <laughs> Which, you know, yeah. He's, he's, he's big shit you. now. Like, I'm not too worried about him. For sure. Yeah. Um, Nam was a, I don't think that's happening next year. No, I think Which it got. I'm like, I'm okay with, to be honest. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I am too. <laughs> Like, Nam, Nam is, Nam is fun, love hate, but yeah, it's just crazy. And I always perform, so like, it's just stressful because that's the other. So that's one of the cons of this setup is I I can't play Night versus Song without my pedal board. So like, I have to bring my entire pedal board and sometimes like two guitars just to play like three songs or five songs or something stupid. So like, that's like, I mean, it's what I, I, that is my stuff. So it's my problem. But like when I think about now i think about having to lug my board with a guitar on my back and like a backpack of cables and all that shit like through now <laughs> yeah, through yeah. a crowd and no one cares they're just like oh like what like not really moving out of the way but um it's fun though i mean i do like the performance once i'm there and set up like it's always fun to play oh that's just like, tour for me super loud like if i'm thinking yeah, about sure. going on tour right now i'd probably have an anxiety attack but like once i'm playing the shows i'm like living my best life you know it's, it's so weird how that totally. works uh, I've never yeah, performed in like, Nam, I like so seeing the gear. I'm good. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, it's cool because you obviously like you get passerby people that are just like kind of checking out a booth, and maybe they hear something they like, and they'll stick around. And well, not know, only that, but yeah, the, the hope is that the caliber of dudes who might hear your shit, like, right? Yeah, yeah legends stroll around Nam. You know what I mean? And that's why I go too. Like, yeah. even though I don't perform, I try to demo at a decent amount of places just so people are. You know, people will know what's yeah, going you on. Never know. Yeah, you never know who's there. And Nam, fortunately for me, is like down the street, so like it's not. Ah, like okay. I have to That's your hop area. On a, hop on a plane and bring all my shit. Yeah, yeah. I okay. live like literally 15 minutes from there. Yeah, I have to or, buy Anaheim. like a 600 dollars plane ticket to get there. Yeah, I don't feel bad for so you then different. anymore. You don't have to fly your fucking pedal board <laughs> anywhere. Yeah, I just drive my car up. <laughs> park. Oh, life is hard, man. But I have to get. I have to get there. I get like a demonstrator badge so I can just come in a little bit early sometimes, but you have to get there early for the parking. So I'm there all day. Like I'm there all day, pretty much every day of them. Well, so um, let's talk guitars a little bit. Um, yeah. Is that how you hooked up with Tosin? Uh, I kind of, to be honest, I can't remember 100% how we very first connected. I know um, like he started following like eric at one point my drummer and i think like on instagram and i think they exchanged a message at some point and then um yeah he kind of just like hit me up or he started following me and then he kind of hit me up and was like yo like are you interested in playing our stuff basically and i'm with ernie ball music man but they don't make eight string guitars yet so at I all was like and they my kind of no they don't make any eight strings they only have sevens and six and stuff that's insane so, um, to me yeah it's pretty crazy so they might at some point, but like right now. So basically like, like you can play his eight string. Right. right. So their rule, their only contingency is basically like if we make it, like we prefer if you played our stuff, but if we don't make it, then like do your thing. So like they don't care. That's pretty standard. So I was playing a Strandberg for a while and uh, the Strandberg, I didn't have like an endorsement or anything. I was just playing it and it, it's, it was a cool guitar, but it was very um, tedious to like change strings and like tour with it. Well, touring with it travel wise was nice because it's super light and it had a tiny backpack it fit in and stuff. But like the actual changing strings took like way too long. And like if I snapped a string, there's no way I could pop a new one on in between a like song or something. Um, so that sucked. But anyway, so Tosin he hit me up and then uh, was like asking if I'd be interested in trying one of the guitars. And I was like, yeah, for sure. 
So we kind of talked and he actually came over and brought his actual guitar that he uses, his Abasi. And uh, I played that for a bit and I was like, dude, these are dope. Like they're super nice. And I've played it's weird. This because, past like, Nam was the first time I got my hand. They're pretty insane. Dude, they're cool guitars and they the way they sit on your like leg or whatever, if you're sitting feels really comfortable. Standing with it feels good. And like it's kind of big, but like I don't know how to explain it. Like it just feels like the most comfortable eight string I've played. It's ergonomic, and, uh, right? Yeah, dude. And like he obviously is a dope guitar player and he knows like what is cool about guitars what he likes and dislikes he's been with a few companies himself i believe so like he knows he's been experienced with that and so for him to make a company like he knows where to like you know keep it real i guess on a guitar and like what's best for a guitar player and it, it seems to be like everything he's doing is perfect in that way to me so, uh is, so, have, so have you fucked with his like uh it's not multi-scale but it's like uh different interval width guitar neck is yours you know what i'm talking um, about i don't know so i mean mine it's similar to a strandberg in the sense like the weird trapezoidal neck is like thicker on the bottom end of the top of the neck you know what i mean uh, okay yeah but, no this feels like regular okay I, the strandberg was like that where it's like so a bit. at nam this past year he has a japanese made seven string that is different interval width neck but it's rounded instead of trapezoidal Oh, okay, cool. And it was so phenomenal. So sick. But like that's that's pretty cool. Playing Ernie Ball, you guys have like the thinnest necks on earth, like the shreddy necks. Dude, they're they're very easy to uh play. Yeah, sure. yeah, they like the Ernie Balls play you. I've always that's what I've always said about Ernie Ball. Well, it was actually kind of a trip because when I got with when I got with them, we were Night Versus was always endorsed by Ernie Ball for strings. So right. I, I used to be with PRS. Like PRS was, I was endorsed by them for the baseball net, baseball bat, band. dude. <laughs> they're uh, they're really nice guitars, and I still have my favorite at this point. I guess maybe it's not anymore, but the guitar I've always used for like everything was my first PRS Satin. So like this thing was like, oh, it's sick. Yeah, I can't. Remember. We we recorded a, an era EP on the the Mike Mushak, if I'm saying that right, his bare tone. Yeah, I used to have it. Yeah, it's a it was a fucking Wait, the, PR, the PRS one or the Ibanez. PRS. Oh okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He had two. He had that and he had the Ibanez one. I, I actually have didn't know one. that one. Uh, yeah, we recorded and that was that was like PRS is sick. Like they make good guitars. Um, yeah. and Dusty from BT Bam's PRS is sick. Like it has a it really awesome. shreddy neck for PRS. It looks cool too. I like his color schemes on that. But like Tosin came from Ibanez. Like, he likes a shreddy neck. You like a shreddy neck. I'm Ibanez. Yeah. Like there's just companies I, I struggle with, man. Like anytime I go to a friend's house with a Schecter, I'm out. I can't do it. <laughs> anytime they have a PRS, stuff like that. Like it's just like I can't play it. It sucks for me. They're definitely chunkier. Yeah. Um, like when I play my PRS now, if I ever just keep screwing <laughs> around, it feels like fatter yeah. on the neck. And I never thought about it before until I started playing Ernie Ball stuff and then going back randomly to that. Cause I keep that guitar in like standard tuning. So if I ever want to screw around in like some pop punk or something random like that, uh, or like if I'm working on someone else's music that needs that tuning, then uh, I can have that ready. But all my other stuff I keep in drop C. And then my my eight string, I have a tuning I kind of made up, and then which is like drop F, basically like an open tuning. And uh, seven string, I do like I keep in like drop A in like a sort of similar open tuning. Um, but yeah, the Ernie Ball stuff is like really easy to play. They're kind of small, like they're smaller guitars, so yeah, getting to the frets is a lot easier than right. more manageable. Um, but yeah, I was playing. I was saying I was playing PRS, and then uh. My rep from Ernie Ball was like, yo, have you ever played like a music man? And I was just like, I re actually haven't. Like none of my friends growing up had those guitar center, but well, I never really carried it. Fucking expensive. Yeah. Like yeah. so I played them growing up at guitar centers, but like the the like customer service dudes would be like eyeballing me because they're such a high price tag or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah I never uh 
I never really saw one before that. So it was like when he asked me that, I was very interested because I was just like, oh, like I because he's basically like, oh, you should come up and, you know, come to the office and like try them. And I was like, okay. So when I did that, I like immediately realized like, oh, these are awesome. Yeah, they're really, uh, really solid guitars. Yeah, and they make a lot of they make a wide variety of styles, too. So like it's not really anything where you get stuck with one and you're like, oh, I wish I like could get like a strat, but then they they make a strat. So there's they have like all kinds right, of Right, yeah. The you know, variation. Silhouette or cutlass. It's called silhouette. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, like even actually, speaking about yeah. Tosin and his company, Abasi, I mean, John Petrucci has really led the way for music men. <laughs> music Ernie Ball. <laughs> um, I mean, he's yeah. an amazing he guitar like, player. He yeah. knows what we need. He he really, it's a sick. It's- yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm curious if they, if they put out an eight string, I don't know exactly what happens on my end, but I know like they, I love the Abasi and like, I will play that like indefinitely as far as I'm concerned, like that eight string is dope. If I wasn't with Ernie Ball, I would play all of his stuff if I could because well, the six string I played at Nam I played a six string and I played a seven string and they both felt really good and unique on their own right like they right. didn't feel like a smaller version of the eight string that I have they just felt like all good for their their genre of like strings or whatever um but yeah and I don't know it's it's dope I I use that guitar all the time that's like my my eight string has become like when I first had one I used it only when i wanted something heavy but now i've gotten to a point where it's like i can use it all the time in night verses and like it's not even a question of like if it works anymore right well and technically you can do anything on an eight string you could on a seven six yeah i always just assumed i guess the lower tuning would make it more metal and like take away the vibe of like what we usually would do but now it's just kind of enhanced right yeah i've actually lower tuning i never I've played an eight string like twice in my life. It's just not somewhere I'm interested in going, which is funny. But my seven yeah. string, after first learning how to play it, opposed to now, like it really just opens up your world a little bit. That's all it does. There's like no. Dude, the way I look at it now, like I would play a 10 string guitar. Like the more strings, <laughs> the merrier in the sense of like, well, because <laughs> don't think about it so much, or I try not to think about it so much as like, you have to keep going lower or like you're adding more like low notes. It's more like you're opening, you have more strings to add more octaves and add more like, well, yes, things like that. So your range increases, but you're also I have four octaves. Of F. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. But with a 10 string guitar, you are also ultimately just putting more tension on a piece of wood too. Like you do run into problem. Yeah. yeah there's stuff like, like I sometimes have a, enough trouble keeping my six string intonated so it's like when i add you know two more strings or such but yes no i completely agree i I agree with you and i i'm actually jealous of the guys who can pick up seven strings and eight strings and then like shred jazz because like dude if i picked up a standard tuning eight string or a seven string i'd be lost pretty quickly like i'm not good right yeah yeah yeah. i have to i have to do custom tunings that just make sense in my head Oh right, but, yeah. But even still, at the, yeah. at, at the sense, I if I pick up a seven string, I'm probably gonna digin on it a little bit. You know, I have to do some bwop wops and stuff. It's just well, what what do you guys play primarily? You play six, sevens primarily now. I think we have more oh, okay, content okay. on seven strings than six. Oh, crazy! But when we right, well, I mean, we have an album coming out eventually, not a, de- a, a date set yet or anything. But I think that'll make three full lengths opposed to two full lengths from our strings. Cool. Yeah. Did you do this one with both? Nope. We did it with Grant and Carson. Uh, oh, okay. ABR, Polaris, a uh, bunch of sick bands. <laughs> sick. Uh, if you heard I Have God, the single that we did back when, a while back, they recorded that and we were so happy that we're just going to record it. Um, but I love Bo to death. He's it's the dope. sickest dude ever. It's nice when you find somebody that you can guarantee that uh, the recording is going to work for you guys. Well, we had that with Brian Hood. Uh, are you familiar with him at all? I've heard that name. He's <laughs> he's the drummer for My Children, My Bride. 
Oh, really? Yeah, and he actually grew up in Alabama. But my children, my bride's from Alabama, so we knew him growing up. So the Era Dudes, this is before I was in the band, the Era Dudes in high school recorded with Brian Hood. And then he just ended up kept, like he got bigger as an engineer and Era got bigger as a band and they just kept using each other for like the first couple full lengths. And then he got big enough to where he didn't even or like track himself. Like he's just mix. That was it. That's all he was going to do. And we hated that. We just, it just didn't translate well. And that's what we went to Nick Sampson in Detroit to Bo in LA to now Grant. Like it's, it's been a bit of a rough process, but you guys should try Will Putney sometime. We're, I think Grant and Carson are, is our, is our home now. Like, we, oh, okay. yeah, That's we good. love those cool. dudes. Good. Mainly good. also because we love Will's mixes for instrumental stuff. Like they're insane. They're like top of the line, but Jesse's clean singing is such a backbone of the band. And we just, I don't know. We just prefer some like heavy, heavier vocal mixed producers and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, dude, whatever works. Yeah, that's yeah. the most important thing. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, I- we finally found it. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. You, yeah we, have you guys been with- Will Putney like the whole time? Uh, no, we started off with Chris Crummett. Oh wow. Um, we did two two releases with him, and then we went to Ross Robinson, and Will Putney mixed it. And then the last record, Will Putney did the entire thing. Um, Putney's awesome, but dude. What was cool about that, though, what was cool about that actually is we went to Crummit for our first EP and our first full length, Ross for the second full length, and then Will Putney tracked and mixed everything and then sent us five masters. And he was like, let me know which one you think is best. They're from five different people. One is mine and then four other people. And he didn't tell and you? The one that we picked. No, he didn't tell us who it was. That's just like, savage as fuck. Think, the master you think is best. And we we picked Chris Crummett's though, so Chris Crummett mastered the newest one. I was just like, wait, what? Like, so that's cool. <laughs> we kept everything like in the in the family. Uh, that's funny. So yeah, it was pretty. Sick. That's a yeah. sick story. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty rad. Uh, um, kudos to Will. I mean, that's got balls. Like, hey, which one's the best? Dude, Will's dope. Like, I I hope that everything Night Versus does is pretty much like including him in some capacity, whether it's him tracking, mixing, or just like producing. Cause I, I like his, I like his perception of our band and I like the way he is a good guitar player himself. He's actually the first guitar player that I've ever recorded with that was actually like a good guitar player. So like he knew what was up with like, if I had like, maybe if, if I was trying to do something and I was like, what do you think of this? Or like suggesting ideas, like he would bounce things back at me sometimes. And I'd be like, okay, yeah, that is cool hearing from you if it's good. And if it's not good, then I trust you to tell me that it's not good versus like somebody being like, ah, no, it sounds weird. And it's like, well, like no suggestion back or something like that. But like he actually could show me something too if he needed to. Um, well, so Grant he Carson. All stuff and fit for an autopsy. Right. Oh, yeah. I know that. I know the whole. So for sure. Our biggest introduction into Will was in Vin Animate. Uh, Jesse did a lot of like vocal producing and stuff for that band. And he worked with Will. Like it's just. We're all intertwined. And we are really close with the Gideon guys because they're from Alabama too. Oh, okay. Yeah, and they're they're Will Putney. Um Grant and Carson are is a guitar player and a drummer, so you kind of get like a cool blend of that, like the dynamic that you're speaking of right now. Uh because you get a drummer's perspective and a guitar. Like it's it's so solid. That's sick. And then yeah. we, like I said, we recorded Drift with Nick Sampson, who is one of the Hardest shredders I've ever met in my life. Yeah, uh, that guy's good. Yeah. I'm Abomination. Was the, what was this band called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, yeah. dude. Yeah, he's a super shredder. Yeah, definitely. he shreds like crazy. And he just understands music to like a crazy degree. Um, That's good. That's sick, too, because when I listen to you guys, I don't hear Putney. I didn't know it was Putney. And typically, yeah, he, when I listen to Putney's stuff, I can pick it out but that's cool yeah i i will say that i feel like our record he did is probably one of the best i've heard him do as well and Ooh. i don't mean that as like any <laughs> slight toward anybody right or yeah, bias yeah or anything like that it's one of my favorite recordings in general and like it's my band which is a trip because usually i can't really look at it that way but when i heard it back i was like damn like this is like like i've been a fan of his for a long time like he i pushed for him 
to do our record for both the last two records and uh this one i'm so stoked it finally worked that we got him to do it all but uh yeah like when i heard it back i was like dude this is like better than i would have expected him to do and it's better than like anything i felt like at least at the time and i don't mean that purely i mean that purely on the mix like the parts that had nothing to do with like me like not like the playing or the songwriting just like the actual sound of right the, the son the sonic um, value i thought he did a really good job yeah yeah and like it also helped coming out of the ross robinson situation because that recording process was kind of insane but having a having like more of a traditional streamlined way of tracking was really cool and he did a good job yeah with with grant ross was dope with too. grant and carson know. our mix finally feels like how it we've been like searching for years now there's a we have like a very certain sound live that never translated to our records for some reason like we're a bigger like a big sounding metal band that's got a lot of kick and snare and power and heaviness and like we we lacked that in our recordings um and grant and carson have brought that to fruition so we're just we're stoked it's the similar that's sick i heard that the single you guys put out sounded good thank you man that fucking that harmonic part i did not expect that to <laughs> drop like that i was just like oh well we right. <laughs> if you've been following <laughs> us for so a while sick. like there's a fans of our band know that part in a lot of our other songs but it's like we just keep double timing it every time we put something out like there's a breakdown like that two records ago and it's like a low note and then digga 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 on the harmonics but now we're just like <laughs> just like shredding it out it's we're just we're beating a dead horse at this point honestly but yeah i was fast yeah, yeah i was not i was just like listening to the song it was cool it's cool i was like oh, oh shit i was just like <laughs> I think just super crazy. That's a sound. That's tight. It's wild. Yeah. So yeah. we try to do a lot without effects on guitar, like making the weirdest sounds we can. Um, we Sick. we do a lot of like from the very low. We play in like a drop F sharp tuning. Okay. And we'll do like the lowest note into like the twenty fourth fret of the highest string into like just like weird contrastual. Just it's same thing you do. You just you try to play with sounds like more sonic value of sounds yeah. than like you know. fun, man. It just no, keeps shit the fresh out of your guitar. Yeah. Uh, when well, it's cooler for you in the sense of like if you haven't gotten into the pedal world yet too much, like you're already getting weird sounds out of your guitar. When you start incorporating pedals, it just opens up even more doors for weirdness. Yeah, I mean, right now That's I'm fucking like, with cool. like. <laughs> I want to be a Floyd Rose player so bad. But I hate the Floyd Rose. <laughs> like, I just, I hate yeah. changing the strings. I hate the maintenance. I hate when there's something that goes wrong. So I'm really I, trying uh, to approach like a Guthrie Govan string manipulation type. Like, I want to sound like a, like a tremolo player without being one. So I'm, I'm like kind of traversing into that. Yeah, I mean... There's some really, really, really cool stuff you can do with a tremolo, but I'll, I agree 100%. I'll say one name. Like kind of a bitch. Scott Carstairs, that dude for Fallujah. Oh, yeah, yeah. God, uh, dude. I don't think he takes his hand off the Floyd, but he, it's, he's like a, a different guitar player. It's a beast. It's insane. That guy's really good. He's insane. <laughs> um, yeah, I had so my first guitar with Ernie Ball. I have all my tremolos blocked on my guitars, so like they all came with a bar. I have all the bars right. They're all like strat me, type but... bars, right? I think so. I mean, they're all just like yeah, just like a normal whammy bar or whatever. Right. But um, yeah, like basically. Well, I'm saying they don't have like was a thing. they don't have an overly complicated locking nut with like a bar that you have to groove the strings through. I think it's like a. I don't think so. No. Yeah, yeah. But but honestly, I'm not 100 percent sure either. I don't. I'm kind of like a little dumb when it comes to that. I'm stuff, pretty but, positive. Uh, I'll actually. I'll I'll bring one of my guitars on. I love this because it makes Floyd Roses easier. But all these like locking nuts with like the Allen wrenches up top. Oh uh, yeah. So you have to unlock both sides of the. guitar. There's so much. That's a dope guitar. Thanks, man. This is the one kind. Which after Sick. after I built this thing, <laughs> I 
there's like it's got like a very Mateus Asato vibe, but also Tim from Polyphia kind of released one, and now Jared Dines's Sterling is like the same. So it's like whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I love it though. It's sick. I I like to I like yeah, to play like heavy music on not heavy looking guitars, even though you know what I mean. Yeah. Like it looks like your dad's That's strat, cool. you know, the best way I like to word it. Just confuse people before you guys <laughs> drop your F sharp. Right, yeah, exactly. Uh what are your favorite um, pedals on your pedal board? Well, I always really go to the whammy is like probably that the that's the one, one that I could then, like uh, just like scrolling through your Instagram, that one sticks out. Um, yeah, that's always been kind of like my my main pedal, I guess. That and obviously delay. But uh, and you utilize yeah, it really delay. well. You you write really cool stuff with that thing. It's awesome. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, and there's also this thing called the Ricochet, which is also from Digitech, which kind of emulates things that a whammy can do. But um, it basically it's its own thing. So if you're gonna get into pedals, you want to get into like weird stuff, get a Ricochet, 100. percent Ricochet is dope. And you knew, have you heard of the Drop Tune pedal? We use that. So, okay, cool. Yeah. So the Ricochet can do that too. So the Ricochet has that in it. It has the same kind of things as a whammy. Like you push on the the button and it'll shoot up or down depending on how you set the pedal. So I set it kind of weird for certain things and like it could do some crazy sounds that you can't really do with a whammy. Um, so I have both. So I use both of those uh, and then delay. Those are like my favorite. That's my favorite combination. But which delay all of my are you pedals using? have kind of a specific purpose. Uh, I have a Boss DD20, the Giga Delay, which is like that double pedal, the white one. Yeah. And then a Boss DD6. I was just expecting you to say Strymon. You know, we were just at that point. It's like Strymon's. Nah. They're expensive. They're awesome pedals. Don't they're, get me wrong. they're like nut the house of, expensive. The best. But they, <laughs> uh, they're like $500 a pedal. And like, right. you know, I don't want to bring something like that on tour. So to me, that's kind of why I play the boss stuff for that. Like for delay, at least. Like I don't need, and that's the other thing is I don't need like a fancy delay for just playing shows. For in the studio, like in the studio, I usually use like either Earthquaker delays or Walrus or Strymon. Like I, I do use better delay pedals when we actually track a record. But live, if it's just like quarter note delay stuff or it's just basic sounds and it's not some like crazy shimmery like right spe- special delay, then I'm just gonna be fine with the boss pedal. But I'm actually trying to get um, my hands that on the, mean the boss uh... stuff is bad. No, no, not at all. It like they're actually pretty good, but they're just very like simple they're well you know what pedals. they make so much shit that their good stuff kind of gets suffocated a lot of times that's true yeah yeah they their market is insane like i, I they're remember kind of almost like the Schecter of pedals or something right <laughs> yeah know. yeah because Schecter like, makes like, really like really the, sick like yeah. the entry yeah entry pedal yeah but like it, like if i went through a guitar center and tried every boss pedal which they have those boards you know sitting over there in that like whatever, yeah 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 like so many of those pedals, when you turn them on, will make your signal sound like shit. But there's really good pedals on there, you know what I mean? Um, I'm trying to get my hands on the Horizon Devices uh, delay. Precision driver, the the Echo, the, the Flux, the Flux, yeah. Mainly because yeah, it's consolidated. Like it's a reverb and delay, yeah. and it's really small. Like that, I love that. I tried that at Nam. That sounds awesome. Yeah, it's sick. That whole rig at Nam was insane. The Morgan into the Precision yeah, Drive so good. with the Abasi guitars. It was... I was super stoked on that because they were actually just running the clean channel with the Ape- the Apex, I think it's called. Yeah. Apex preamp. Yeah. Um, they ran that into the for the distortion for that, and it sounded really good. Yeah, I mean that's what I'm doing with my Rev right now. It's just the clean channel with the G3. That's all it is. Um, Sick. It really shows. I mean, Morgans are insane. You put any pedal in front of a Morgan and it's like the most beautiful thing on earth. It's crazy. Um, yeah, those amps are really nice. They're crazy. I've always right? been interested in like having like a a boutique situation like that, like a nicer amp, but I don't know. I mean, I I like my Black Stars, but yeah, I never um I haven't actually played anything other than those in a long time. Yeah, it it's it's fun. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of another reason I'm getting into it as I get older and I'm like 
as much as guitar is my career, I also want to make it a hobby, like on the side, like coming home and like playing a bunch of different gear is fun as it is like being in a band too. Yeah. yeah. Like it would be so fun to just take your pedal board and put it in front of a bunch of different amps. Like that just sounds like so (laughs) much. Yeah. It's just awesome. Um, yeah, that's, that is, that is fun for sure. That's kind of what I end up doing with all this, these amp sims anyway. Yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't mean to keep you this, uh, this podcast is running way longer than normal. I guess we're just having too good of a time chatting. Oh yeah. Whatever. (laughs) Do you have like a time limit or anything you got ready for? Not, not particularly. Cool. Um, dude, if you lived in a world where you'd never found guitar, what do you think you'd be doing? Do you have any other side passions? Somebody asked me that the other day. Um, it's hard because, so does that include like music in general or like guitar specifically? No, I don't think so. Like if you wanted to like mix or something. So true. Like I would probably play bass. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All right. (laughs) Uh, but if it wasn't, if I wasn't going to do that, like you like play an instrument, um, yeah, I would say I'd probably still get into like the mixing world side of things or like doing sound. I think doing sound for bands would be really fun. Cause like, I've never done it, but like I do mix a lot of stuff. Like I've recorded a lot of like people, whatever. And like myself and that part's always really fun to like make something sound good. And I feel like from the perspective of a soundboard, like you making a band sound good and like, you know, leveling things out um i think would be a lot of fun so like that's something i might want to try that just in general anyway when i have the chance to but that's always something i've been interested in but aside from like music stuff like to not be boring with the question i guess like (laughs) probably something with food or like ideally like video games like i love video games and I, i think the idea of like you know going into a way to like I would love to be able to program, like create a video game that's so whoa like a video game itself ever actually do Dude, I always have these like random thoughts of like the types of get like kind of like what Battle Royale has become now. Like Battle Royale games are very like common, but I've always thought it's cool to have like those environments of just like pure like fighting, like just like everyone on their own. Like you have this like, you know, you start from scratch, you find stuff, whatever. Like that whole concept is awesome to me. I didn't think of that specifically in general, but like when it's once it happened, I was like, it was awesome. But yeah, I've always had this one idea of a game where sort of ish like that where like you could have i don't even know if i'm able to describe this well but basically like every character have you ever played um have you ever played left for dead oh yeah oh yeah so did you ever play this like custom map called helms deep that was like emulating the lord of the rings thing oh no that sounds crazy so it's so sick so like somebody made a map it's like a mod version of left for dead yeah so it's like literally the helms deep wall So like where everyone's, you're like up on this wall. And before the, that even starts, you enter a room, you start in a room that has like guns everywhere. So like every weapon, every melee weapon in the game, every gun, all that stuff, all the like ammo and like grenades you can get, like everything you just stock up on, like all the weapons and stuff. And then you get placed, you like go up on this wall. So you're on this wall and there's like a never ending horde of zombies. And you're just defending the wall. That's so sick. Yeah. You're just defending the wall. So it's really fun. And I always had this idea of a game that was sort of similar to that, but like you start, everyone starts in like a room of their own by themselves and you have like all your weapons you can pick from. And then you like shoot out through like a tunnel and enter like an arena. And like, so everyone had the opportunity to pick whatever weapons they want. And then you just fight and whoever wins is like last man standing kind of thing. And like, that's like a simple concept. I'm sure there's plenty it, of games that do something like that. In this, but, in this idea, is it like grand scale? Like is it a huge map or is it more of like a, a centralized arena? Not that big. It would be more like a quake style, but it would be like more like where it would all be one room. There wouldn't be a bunch of like corridors and stuff. It would just be one massive like arena room and it could have like crowd like in a stand like all around or whatever, like gladiator style. But like the idea of like everyone starts in their little thing. You pick yeah, it's you like I like how you have yeah. like a free roam style loadout pick. That's- Cause that's essentially what yeah, it is, right? Like, like you have an entire array of things you can pick, which would be like your loadout. Right. But then you just like on the yeah. spot. Yeah. That's really sick. I enjoy that idea a lot. I think it'd be fun and it'd be, it's pretty simple conceptually. And like the idea also, obviously like, you know, skins and all that kind of stuff is fun to like incorporate, like make your character unique. Like I always thought like that situation is pretty cool, but 
Yeah, I guess I would lean towards video games if I could. Well, and I know testing games sounds better than it probably is, but I feel like that I would still want to do it. Uh, <laughs> I tested games when I was young. Actually, uh, my late stepdad uh, was one of the original map designers for the Halo, like the first Halo. Oh, wow. I was eight years old, and I went into Bungie Studios, and I'd like... It was actually like <laughs> using an eight-year-old to test your video games sounds hilarious, but like when you're testing a video game, it's actually agonizing because you're you're limit te- like you're trying to break their game basically, and right. that's not as fun as playing the game. So like playing a game is a lot more fun than like trying to break through the corner of this wall because you need to see if this wall is break like you know like that's what video game testing is like. So it's actually like a totally. lot more like I, tedious of a work than it sounds. Yeah, you're not like enjoying the game. You're just right. Trying. You're to, actually just, just trying to break it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which I saw this guy do a a speed run of Doom and Doom Eternal, I think. Yeah. And he broke the shit out of that game. <laughs> like he was literally like going through walls. It's that, like, really funny like, that most speedrunners will break the game in the process. Like. The old school, like 007, you would look down and follow like the floor path or whatever. Like you have to recognize the patterns because when you look down, you're like 0.5 seconds quicker, like just crazy shit like that. Um, For sure. But dude, your your guitar playing and like atmospheric instrumental type leading, I could easily see you making like soundtracks and shit too. Dude, I am so down. To do that. <laughs> if there's ever an opportunity yeah. to do that, I, that's I you gonna be the to you gonna be the next too, Mick so. Gordon, dude. Oh, hell yeah, yeah <laughs> I'm dude. so down. Yeah, dude. there we go. He's he's so good too. That that soundtrack, both of them. He did. I haven't played the new Doom, but the first one he did was like. What's perfect. funny like, is I haven't played so Doom better. or Wolfenstein. Um, but I listen to their soundtracks a lot. <laughs> it's really funny um dude doom 2016 was sick yeah I, I haven't played the new one but i'm sure it's just the same shit just better um but yeah well so i was like a perfect shooter i'm yeah. big into league of legends that's why i'm wearing my jersey today for those watching tsm made nice. it to worlds We're going to worlds <laughs> um but <laughs> their is. their studio is insane too because their game is a freemium game it's free right um but they have you ever played League? Are you familiar with the world at all? I tried it once though. Like not I didn't really play it that much. Okay. So they just they release skins. That's how they make their money, right? Like yeah. for every there's like 150 champs, whatever. Like it's just cool. The economy of it's cool. But let me get to the point. They release K pop skins for their champs, but they'll release bands along with the skins. So they're about to put a K pop EP out attached to the champions in the game what yeah it's insane that's pretty crazy and the spotify plays that they get on are insane um damn and to backtrack a little bit more they have a metal band called pentakill which is what happens when you wipe the enemy team alone and those records are so sick (laughs) so whatever guitar player they have in their studio crushing it it's insane it's like older power oh, metal-y awesome. type stuff, like dad rock kind of stuff. But if you get a chance, you should check out Pentakill. A... I'll check it out. How do you... Is it just spelled how it sounds? Yeah, Pentakill. Like five. For sure. Oh, hold on, I gotta fix my hair. <laughs> I'm jealous, man. Do it. Do what I can't. Gotta clip in the, the old hair over there. I, I know oh, nothing about that. Sorry. <laughs> um uh yeah dude if i ever you know if i ever meet a guy who needs a guitar player for video games i'll try not to bring it within myself to take it and pass your name along I'll, I'll split it with you we'll just do riff for riff there you go yep we'll do that uh there's actually in, in call of duty in uh battle or in um war zone there's a soundtrack that happens if you choose it where you jump into a vehicle and this metal starts playing. Oh, like and a radio like station? Like a pretty cool riff. Yeah, and it's like a pretty cool riff. It happens every time you get into the car. It's a pretty cool riff. And I was just like, damn, like 
what generic guy wrote like i i want to do that like let me right yeah no yeah it's it's definitely like a a a job that i would willingly like very willingly do um oh yeah God, yeah, I think like on Mick Gordon's like, level, it's pretty it's pretty legitimate though. Like his stuff is like right. a style to where it's like it's not just writing a metal song. It's like he created like an industrial gent sound that right and like it, games so seek him out. Like he's the fucking he's got a new one. Did Chris Lord the, Algae um, of video game music. You know what I mean? Like he's yeah, he's psycho. He's doing a new game. Uh, I forget what it's called, but it's like a horror sort of. It looks like a little more horrored out than Doom, but um, it looks like it's also like a first person kind of game, but it's like a horror game, I think. And he's scoring that and he posted like a little tr- clip, like trailer. It's sick. It oh, sounds man. sick. It looks sick. I'm so happy you're it's a gamer. Gaming is a section on the podcast that we get into. Um, you primarily only do music on Twitch though, right? Yeah, I haven't really got into streaming games. I mean, to be honest, like I don't play much right now other than warzone like call of duty is kind of the only game i really am putting any time into um but i used to play and i might still i might play more also but it's just like well playstation is probably where i play most of the stuff at this point because like i was saying i have the mac so like i'm a little limited in terms of what i can do on a computer well that's actually better for you um because if you get a capture card your gaming isn't running your streams down Make sense? Oh, okay. So if you get a capture card for your so PlayStation, like, you'll actually just be gold like, set. Oh, well, cool. Like imagine yeah, I'll consider it. I mean Well, yeah, but, I mean I'm obviously not gonna <laughs> like push you to stream video games, but like it's just another way to con like connect with your fan base and like you're gonna be playing the video games anyway, you know what I mean? Right. That's how that's I'm that's how I looked at the music thing. Right. That's how I'm thinking about it. I, I need to incorporate more music than I do video games. I play a lot of games on Twitter. But uh, the podcast is like my effort to connect with more of a community basis. You know what I mean? Like, I'm basically meeting you right now. You know, it's awesome. Like, yeah. And like, especially during this time oh, where sure. everyone's quarantined, like a lot of people aren't hanging out. Like I get to talk to my friends for a long time that I probably wouldn't talk to. Oh, well, who knows when? You know what I mean? It's wild. Sure. Yeah, I'm hoping it won't be as long as it probably actually will be. <laughs> you already know that it will be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be like another year plus in my assumption, but whatever, man, there's like ways you got to find out to like, it forces people to adapt. And I think that's a good thing. And I think the idea of like, you know, putting people in new environments to be creative is always good. And I think like a lot of people are not being creative and just complaining, but I think there's a lot of people that have benefited from this scenario because when you're home and you're forced to like entertain yourself or do something productive or something that you need to make money with, like it helps being forced to do so rather than like, I I definitely never thought of myself to be a podcast host. You know what I mean? But here I am. Yeah, exactly. Like exactly. Same for me with Twitch. Like, I mean, I was planning to some point do it, but like I got driven to do it more when this all happened. Right. And yeah, like it's been a lot of fun for me. That's probably my favorite thing that I've done in a really long time. So, dude, I'm that's so that awesome. I'm I'm, I'm glad I was around fun, when man. you started. Um, yeah, no, definitely. You you got me in the Discord and stuff too. Like I wasn't doing that until you kind of mentioned it. So, all that stuff's been really uh really good as well. And people are cool. I mean, it's cool having like a community on there that you know gives a shit and is entertained by everything going on. And like I am always open to suggestions too. So like as I'm writing stuff, like I'm down to let people kind of chime in and be like, you know, like what, who's in here right now? Oh breakfast. yeah. Like breakfast. Lexus select, uh, <laughs> there likes you me go. To do China, China symbols, China. There you go. <laughs> exactly. So I mean, there's always people that are, uh, you know, chiming in on that stuff, which I'm down with that whole situation is cool. Um, I'm trying to see, I mean, everyone, they're all going to listen to the songs anyway, you know, so I'm down to everyone be stoked on it. Yeah, true. I'm trying to see if I can talk about what I've been doing behind the scenes yet. I don't, I don't really think I can. Um, my introduction into like the video game world is. So there's an Instagram account right now where you can go and just watch because League of Legends is a massive game. It has a pro teams spread across the world. There's like it's a it's probably the biggest esports franchise, I think. Really? 
Yeah, I, I'd wow. like to think yes. I went to the finals on my birthday last year in Detroit, and it sold out Little Caesars Arena. Just like oh, shit. psycho. Um, so basically, I have now been employed by a company. I signed a non -D an NDA, so I'm being very careful about what I say. Something is being released soon, but as of right now, Instagram, I basically am the guy who gathers like content reels. So I pick up highlights from like esports and Twitch streamers and stuff like that. Um, so I'm basically just getting paid cool. to watch video games and content gather and stuff. So it's just like. That sounds nice. It's so sick, man. And it's just like cool. It's like I, I'm not making buku, you know, like as I do in everything in life. <laughs> you know, I take my change everywhere I can get it. Um, but it's just cool to be involved yeah. in like something tech and video games because that's what I love to do. Like, how do you get your foot in that door? Dude, for sure. Yeah. And definitely. Twitch is like, definitely that is like the goal for life. Yeah, yeah. And Twitch is like a a sick big community and a whole new social media platform that really revolves around that world. You know what I mean? It's so cool. Yeah, I mean, that's how I've always associated Twitch was like video games. And that's when I started seeing people do it for music, like um, you know, Matt from Trivium and like Herman Lee is kind of leading the the pack on that, I feel. Um and kind of just seeing the possibility of it. And I was just like, well, if I can get this set up, like that'd be pretty fun after I'll figure it out. But after quarantine, dude, everyone's on there. Literally right before yeah. this stream, I was watching contortionist and Matt yeah, Garska dude, I mean, hosted I mean, him. It should be. And so it's just like oh, nice. the whole, the whole squad's on here. And that's good because I think right now we could all use each other's like support. Yeah. So, yeah. It's super sick. Super stoked on it. <laughs> um so what you're only playing warzone right now i guess you said that already yeah um but before that i mean i beat spider-man that was like my favorite game in a while um, yeah, i've heard that i haven't that played was, like, it yet PS4 only. it's so sick and then red dead redemption i was really into for a bit um i just got fall guys but i don't really <laughs> like it that much to be honest it's so dumb <laughs> dude i'm just gonna say it it's so stupid it's pretty fucking dumb, but it has like, uh, like there's, I get it, but like I got it and got over it, I guess. Yeah. But like, I think, uh, it makes sense why people are tripping on it, but I feel like it's kind of, I got bored. Maybe I just sucked at it. I don't know. But yeah, uh, Warzone is probably the most immersive game I've played in a long time, maybe ever. And like that part of it. And like, I play with a couple of like good friends of mine and like that scenario of like, you know, meeting up together and like actually seeing my friend like walk around like all that stuff is like really fun right and yeah, yeah. uh it's hard it's hard though it's a really hard like that game is it is i really played it at there. launch uh trent from after the burial was actually getting into streaming back then and he did oh, like okay. a sumerian ban war zone tournament thing um are you guys on sumerian not anymore we were oh, okay. until sure. this single Oh, crazy. Yeah, we were for uh, three releases. So we, we filled our contract Absolutely. and we moved on. Yeah, that whole thing. They traded, they traded you guys with Smashing Pumpkins? <laughs> yeah, they really, they really got the good end on that deal. Dude, I, I, was, pretty crazy. I was like curious about what Smashing Pumpkins was going to be like on Sumerian, but I think, they, I think they hit a million YouTube views in like a day. Yeah. Fucking crazy, man. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, it's pretty well. It's just like me to assume a band's washed up and no one cares and fucking <laughs> they just destroy it, dude. Dude. That band will always have some type of following. I'm sure it, it trickles in and out throughout their career, but Billy Corgan's always pretty active with music, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I I love that band. I mean, I'm a nineties kid, right? Like I'm gonna get away from that. Yeah, same. Um yeah, I saw them live once. It was actually really funny because they were playing. Um, it was like a acoustic Christmas, which is like a K Rock festival, which is a big radio <laughs> station out here. Okay, and uh, so like all these bands, it was like no doubt. Um, I can't think of any others somehow, but anyway, there's all these like big radio acts, and they were Smashing Pumpkins was playing, and they went to play, and they were just playing like new songs, 
and uh nobody knew any of the songs in the crowd right so like everyone was just waiting for the singles like all these bands are playing for like 30 40 minutes so it's like you know you go there my assumption if i was that band or any of those bands is you'd go there and you'd play the hits and then get out yeah like go to your headliner tour and like kill it on that and play whatever you want yeah like in those scenarios like if you want like the fun atmosphere or whatever people are there to see the bands that they hear they don't know they're not necessarily like obsessed with every band and all of their catalog so like anyway i thought it was funny (laughs) both in the sense i get yeah i get what you're saying like so they're playing like all new songs and then and then billy corgan's like all right and like rolls his eyes he's like here's the song you guys want to hear and he's like nah nah nah, he goes into zero and the crowd goes insane and he's just like yeah whatever fuck me i guess yeah (laughs) we all feel but it's like dude that song's so sick though like whatever (laughs) yeah but how long has he been playing that song man i know i understand i'm tired of songs from like three years ago i can't even imagine i can't wrap my head around what he's experiencing that's so funny though sure wow yeah i mean but it is what it is like that like those kinds of things i would assume like no doubt came on after them and played like every hit so it's yeah, like they're like all their songs were just like all the bangers well from, yeah like, no doubt they're at a party <laughs> so like exactly so. yeah that's so funny man wow um but it's also funny because like they don't care so they're just like yeah we're gonna play or bill according like i'm gonna play what i want to play like i don't well and like what, every what band struggles with that to a degree you know like every every time and i know you've experienced this every time you release an album it's new and people have to learn to love it like they love your old catalog so it's like you can, every musician yeah. kind of goes through that every release and we even still struggle with like we'll put out a 10 song album and we don't know which songs to play off of it because it hasn't been out that long and like we'll play a song and people are like yeah whatever you know it's like but then we could play another track off the album and it would crush live it's such a it's a game yeah we got into a weird spot with our band because we it seems like most of the people who are coming to see us at this point like the instrumental stuff so it's not as common to hear somebody start requesting like old songs even i mean all the old right songs because requesting. your but, band's probably more of just like an experience i guess than uh, yeah i think so yeah um it seems like that so i mean like the idea of like us playing you know old songs really maybe doesn't really make sense to a lot of people but we haven't had that issue so much with at least where where we're currently at maybe when we put out a new record people won't want to hear that and they want to hear the previous one but hopefully not we'll see yeah yeah true i (laughs) instrumental is blowing up like the whole wave of like animals as leaders chan polyphia you guys i feel like you guys all like met in a secret room 10 years ago we're like all right Let's all come out and crush the scene. We talked about it and we're like, (laughs) we'll do it one at a time. And then just all at once put out new records. Dude. No. um... (laughs) Oh, shit. (laughs) Yo, she's pissed. He? He? Dude, two he's and they are both pissed. They're both fucking. (laughs) Yeah, they they run this house. Love dogs. Um, not me too uh yeah the instrumental thing was like a random like we didn't plan to be an instrumental band or anything like that it just kind of worked out that way and like we just ran with it i mean i've been writing with those guys my entire life pretty much so it was oh never, you, you uh, knew those guys like, question of like i've known eric and rally for about at least 16 17 years now okay so, that's like that's like me like and that my dudes whole situation pretty much yeah dude and it you know it's like it was kind of a no brainer for us when it was going to go that way. Cause we all grew up, we still live near each other and stuff like that. So it was <laughs> always like, we don't <laughs> easier, easier for us to function. Oh, bummer. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter right now. Like I'm writing over zoom with these guys most of the time anyway, but before all this stuff happened, like we would meet up all the time and jam and stuff like that. But now it's like, you know, we'll send each other ideas and stuff. Yeah. Quarantine so life. Nelson. Hey, Come here. Oh yeah, show dogs is a uh, channel point reward on my stream. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is Nelson. 
He has a Shih Tzu. Oh, really? He's Kobe. fluffy for a Shih Tzu, I feel like. He is pretty fluffy right now. Come here. <laughs> right now. He's a good hair day. Jump up. And then this is Kobe. He's my other little dude. Oh. He's a little mixed, but Got these guys are the best. Chihuahua in him? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, we have a quote unquote full blood Chihuahua, but I swear he has like Pomeranian or something in him. I don't feel like getting him. I'm not going to show him. On... <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, these so. Are all, these guys are always next to me. That's sick. <laughs> I mean, mine are too, but when I do the podcast, I just try to, you know, suck it in. <laughs> For sure. Uh, with your vision of creating a video game, maybe you can nerd out with me about this. Because uh, my favorite game on the planet died. Um, Epic Games, which made Fortnite, the company that runs Fortnite, had a game called Paragon. Yeah. You ever heard of it? I, yeah, I heard of that game. Okay. Wasn't that supposed to be like the... It was like something else, right? Like the... Um, out, out, Outwatch? Overwatch. Okay. Wasn't it like so, that? So, yes and no. Basically, okay. Paragon is if you took Overwatch and you had like a composition type team, like you have to have a tank, a healer, a, stuff like that, but you put it on a League of Legends map. Okay. So you basically just played a MOBA in that like free action type playing play style. But then it was also ran through the Unreal Engine and it was beautiful. Oh. So it yeah. was like literally one of the prettiest action packed strategy MOBA. Like it's just it was the perfect game and then it just got <laughs> tanked. <laughs> Cuz Fortnite got That's huge sad. and they literally just robbed every dev from the team and like Dude, I hate Fortnite. I wanted to like it so bad, but that whole building mechanism is like the most annoying, stupid shit I've ever seen in a game. And like, I don't know why, like, that is so cool to everybody. Like, I don't get it. Like, that that game makes me feel old or something. Like, I don't understand. Yeah, I'm a boomer when it comes to like, Fortnite. Why people like it. I yeah. tried it. I was like, this game looks sick. Like, I like the graphics. I like the, obviously, like I was saying, I like Battle Royale games. Like, I like that concept. If that game didn't have that wall building stuff, like, I'd be all over it. But, the wall building part, I was just like, dude, I don't get this. Like, yeah. when I watch clips of people playing, they're just like, just like, just going all crazy. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, dude, I don't get it. And in Fortnite, like, what, what you, is the fun? You in couldn't that? get away with it. Like the the good builders in the game were gonna win every time, opposed to like the good FPS players. I I lasted like a month yeah. in Fortnite. That was the same exact way. Um, yeah, I so should I, I didn't get that. I should play Warzone, like with my background of video games. And Warzone is dope. It yeah. is so sick. It is it is the best, like in my opinion, maybe like other Call of Duty versions. Like I didn't even get into Call of Duty until that came out. Like I didn't even care. Whoa. And I played that game and I was like, this is so sick. So like Call of Duty to me was always like it was just too I I waited too long to try it and it just there's too many games, so I didn't even know where to start. But this came out, obviously it being free and like the idea of Battle War Battle Royale is there's no reason not to try it. So I tried it. And I was like hooked immediately. I played it. I've been playing it since it came out. Well, what and uh, I what never Call of Duty of game came out recently that had the remake of Modern Warfare Two? Or uh, I don't know. Actually, anyone in the chat know that one? Because that was oh wait, wait, the new Call of Duty Black Ops. Current, yeah, okay, yeah, the sickest game ever. So, yeah, the so new, well, the new Black Ops just came out. No, I think it's or it's coming. Out. I think it's, it's the out. one with Warzone attached to it. If if I'm not mistaken. And I think it's modern modern warfare. Yeah, that modern warfare two was like the revolutionary Call of Duty, and they released the remake along with. So I think you just like came in at the perfect time. Like I think, yeah, I think you got the golden game. You know what I mean? Like it has the sick battle Dude, royale. It's... It has the remake. I, th I think it has its own mode. I'm not too sure. Yeah, it's it's fun for sure. And like for it being free, it's pretty insane. It's also insane equally to me that it's free and so many people complain about so many things about that game and it's like, dude, it's free. Well, that's just literally like the gaming economy nowadays because of games. <laughs> Fort so Fortnite is free. 
League of Legends is free, but those are like, I think Rocket League's free. Like you just can't keep up. Like blockbuster games are struggling oh, yeah. the hell and back because they try to charge sixty dollars for twelve hours of content. But it's like, I mean. Yeah, but that's where it should be though. With twelve hours of content is nothing. Like they should be charging less for that. Well, like, right. There should be games that are sixty dollars that are like, you know, The Witcher, or, like something like Epic or like Mass Effect, like something that takes like, you know, a lot more time, or it's just so good, like a Call of Duty or like Halo or something like that. Where it's well, just so, so well done. I think so one of the leading or Spider Man, Spider Man, uh, The Last of Us is one of the biggest. Like, yeah, dude, hundred percent Last yeah. of Us. Yeah. Um. God of War, those games, like it doesn't take long to beat them, but you love it so much, you'll probably just pay that. I haven't played Ghost of Tsushima yet. Is that good. Yeah, I um, haven't played that either. I, I, so I, I advocate for all the Souls series, Dark Souls, those are some of the best games ever made. I haven't tried those. If you want to really just break a controller, <laughs> that's what I've heard. Yeah, they're so sick though. They're. One of the best games. It's almost like what you were talking about earlier with Tool, though. Like, it's really interesting to think about someone backlogging Souls games because when they came out, they were painful. Yeah, um, I have seen a lot of footage of them. They look like cool, but they look really hard. Yeah, like, I understand. That. I actually have Sekiro on my laptop, and I haven't beat it yet. I play. It, I only play it on tour, which is really dumb. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, that's the other thing is my band, no one in my band plays video games. I'm the only one. So like what a, that part of my what life a bunch of weirdos. I tried to get them into like random stuff because when we recorded with Chris Crummett, they had Mario Kart and like Mario Party set up and stuff like that. And he actually had a whole arcade that was like modded to have all the every game from every console. And uh yeah, they like no one they don't care. So right <laughs> now what I picture your bandmates doing is like just staring at a blank wall. That's what they're doing right now. Dude, they're <laughs> the thing with them is they're very creative people. So like Eric's always drawing if he's not playing music and Whoa. Riley has a clothing company. So Riley has a full clothing brand that's like killing it right now. So to them <laughs> Yeah, they're actually leading like video game is like <laughs> Yeah, I know. That's honestly how it should be, but like, it's just like as a gamer and like someone it's like what do you do in quarantine when you're not playing a video game, you know? It's so funny. Yeah. They don't. They're not down with. That. I wish and I could. I, don't blame them I wish like, I got into drawing. Productive as hell. Drawing is such a cool skill. Yeah, it's pretty awesome, and I've watched them both get a lot better at it over over time, and it's been really cool. Like they're both super good at it, and it's helpful for the band because like Eric does all of our artwork and stuff like that, and Bradley they like collaborate on certain things, and I just get to sit back and you know thumbs up or whatever. I'll like just I don't play my I guitar. No contribution. It's pretty much yeah. I'll do our demos. That's it. So sick, man. That's awesome um we can keep this rolling we don't have too much left i actually do have a food section and earlier you said you'd probably be doing something with okay. food um passionate yeah. about cooking i do like cooking um i actually just made a super good pico right before this Ooh. started um what's special about it what, what's the signature pico the signature nick dude honestly I've been like messing around. It's it's really, really simple. And like I didn't realize how simple it could be, but literally like whatever peppers I can find, I'm been trying a couple like whatever variations of it. But I like hot shit, so I always make <laughs> Nick like Topico. habanero, serranos. <laughs> Nick <Topico. laughs> uh yeah, I mean like you know, whatever <laughs> hot peppers I can find in the store at the time. It's so weird you're saying this because uh, I worked a shift at work today and a friend of mine brought me just randomly fresh pick pecker pe- <laughs> Pick, pick the pepper, pick <laughs> a pepper. Uh, fresh picked peppers from his garden. So I have some jalapenos and hot banana peppers. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, you should make something with it. Yeah, well, well tell, peppers tell me your, your, right your recipe, and I might make pico after this. Dude, literally, I get one onion. A bunch, we have a tomato plant. My girlfriend has been crushing it on, and it just keeps making really bomb tomatoes. That's sick. So um, I get tomatoes, like little grape tomatoes, like little baby ones. Ooh, Romas? Or cherry tomatoes, right? whatever. No, no, like the little like grape sized ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which I I love those. Tomatoes, I guess they're good. Um, so I get those, and yeah, one onion, and I throw that into a food processor with some cilantro, and then I get like one serrano, one jalapeno, and one like either habanero or like another chili pepper I can find, and I blend all that up into a food processor, and it makes like a really like 
kind of a mushy like salsa and then i just put like salt pepper some garlic and uh that's pretty much it oh the lime and then just mix yep. that all around let it yeah. sit for a while and it's so good dude the like having something fresh like that is such a big difference than like you know buying a jarred salsa and uh yeah it's pretty cool well like, so that's, that's just like a basic thing but are you big into hot sauces oh yeah i do the last dab from hot ones have you tried that yeah i have uh, you, yeah, I have maybe that right now in my kitchen. It's maybe, so good. I, I so I like to keep the bomb around just to fuck with people's worlds. And I haven't tried that yet. Is it, that crazy? It's way worse than the last ab. I don't get it. Um, but it sucks, doesn't it? Like taste bad. <laughs> I guess it depends on who you ask. It's it's not it's not sick. <laughs> but I don't know any insanely hot sauces that are sick. I think the last dab is really good. Like I think that tastes good. I think that one's pretty hot too. No, it's very hot. Well, that, so, that one's not, it's not so hot that I can't handle it though. It's, it's, I don't think I can like just breezily put that on my food. I don't think, but the best way I I'll could describe the, the last dab and I like took like a little, like, like, you know how you like try a hot sauce, you get like a thing and it felt like yeah. someone purple nurpled the back of my throat. That's what the last dab felt like. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> But the Dude, bomb, I, I, fuck it. I pour that on like tacos, like nothing. Like, that's like I love that sauce. Have you ever? So, I have no, I literally like I'll take on any of the hottest stuff you can find. That's sick. I'm not worried about it. Yeah, I mean that's if that and the bomb is probably the worst. I had, I had um like my mouth is like watering right now thinking about hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> You're one of those guys. Yeah. Uh, what Blair's Beyond Insanity or whatever. I've heard of that one too, just from hot ones. That one gave me a panic attack. <coughs> oh, yeah. I was in a firehouse subs, put that shit on my sandwich. The inside so you had that at a restaurant? Oh yeah. Have you ever had have oh. you ever had firehouse subs? It's the sandwich shop? No. So it's a sandwich shop, but it's like modeled after like firemen. So their whole thing is oh, they okay. have like a hot sauce bar. And they're labeled so like it's free for to to grab, I guess like they're not liable for anything that happens, maybe. Um, but yeah, I've actually tried most of the hot sauces from that place. I don't eat meat anymore. Oh, okay. So I don't haven't gone in so long. But back then, I tried Blair's Megadeth. And I got such a bad pain deep in my ears that I started to panic. It was weird. But I ate a full sandwich with that shit on it. So like I did it. <laughs> <laughs> but the bomb is still the worst I, to me. I've never had anything that made me think anything was wrong or that I had like anything that was too hot. Yeah, you have like, you I'll have a legit a uh like I might try betting into a Carolina Reaper one day just to see. But I'd love to be there like, when you do. Please stream it. Oh yeah, maybe I'll I might die, but <laughs> not worth knowing. Um like I've been curious about it forever. So we'll try this out. My favorite hot sauce I've ever had, it's not like insanely hot. Like it it would fuck up some white folks for sure. <laughs> but uh <laughs> it's called Vicious Viper. Have you ever heard of it? So it's like pineapple juice, habanero. It's mainly a habanero backed uh hot sauce. Um and yeah. I think some but it's like it's really heavy on like the the fruit juices. And it's so solid. I love it. I threw it on everything I ate for like a month. I think. That sounds good. Yeah, it was awesome. I uh, do think it's important to have flavor, not just heat, but if it right. is also just heat, I'll try it. Well, that's like the bomb pain 100%. That shit's just hot. Like, it doesn't taste like meat. Oh, yeah, pain. Forgot about that one too. Pain, baby. pain can suck ass. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, man, we're coming at the end. Uh, do you believe in aliens? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Sick. Fuck yes. Like they're out I there mean, or they're like walking among us? Not to. Uh, so <laughs> I think that it's very <laughs> possible that there are some walking among us. And I think the idea of like dudes like Elon Musk who are just like really really crazy smart and kind of genius in like a weird way that no one's been kind of thing like there's a couple of people like that throughout life right that, that like, like really revolutionized I'm not saying he's technology. an alien like i'm not saying he is an alien i'm just saying like the idea of like somebody like that 
I wouldn't be surprised if you told me he was. I'd be like, oh, well, that makes sense because like he's revolutionizing things that people weren't trying to revolutionize yet. Or if they tried, they were not doing it well and he's already doing it. And like, you know, stuff like that, I feel like or it's like possible. who's in yeah. his ear, you know what I mean? Yeah, or that. Or like my 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 thought would be though, if he is, I would have assumed he was planted here unbeknownst to him. Like he's just living his life, but he's got extra shit going on because he's an alien. So all <laughs> like that's like my like <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, like why like, is he like why is he trying to leave Earth that. so bad, man? Where is he trying to he's trying to go home? Exactly. He's trying to just go home. <laughs> like, but he doesn't know that yet. He doesn't know that yet. So he's like oh, he's just like so working good. on something. That's uh, so solid. So yeah, I mean, that's the, <laughs> there's that. Or uh Here's my thing. Are raging now. Here's my oh, it's it's not bad. <clears throat> Here's my crazy conspiracy theory. The one that makes me like actually sound like a psychopath. I th- yeah. I think A, I think human technology has been far more advanced than we think in the past. Like in I think because the earth is so old, there's probably been more advanced technological like technologies and like civilizations that have been like war porn and shit you know what i mean um so i i do believe that has existed in 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 the past because have you ever seen like the the deep sea computers and shit like that no so like there's like really wild like what you would think like maybe like a, a medieval computer would look like you know what i mean they find like remnants of that kind of shit like deep in the ocean sometimes oh really yeah so i'm like i'm like on the whole like maybe even like the greeks were far more advanced than we're giving them credit for and like who helped them get that way and stuff like that and the yeah. whole the whole missing link thing <laughs> this is where i sound crazy I think we're the byproduct of primate and alien. Not like I don't like carry that within me. Like I, I I know it for sure, but I just think it would be cool if we just one day found out that like maybe Elon just has a little bit more alien in him than primate. Uh, you know what I mean? I'm just waiting for him to be like in an interview and his eyes like twitch all weird or something. <laughs> and like, like, maybe we just think he's but, a uh, cyborg or some shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I, I, you can't see my background right now, but it's super, uh, futuristic and tripped out. My streamers have seen it, but anyway, um, I do think there's a little bit of ignorant ignorance to think that there's no possibility of like other life oh, in, right. outside of, yeah. Earth. but then you get so, like, into that, like that conceptually, like just makes sense. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 Cause we wouldn't know. Right. We wouldn't know. And well, if we exist, why wouldn't someone else exist? Like, I refuse to believe there. that the only alien life forms are like, like an alien version of a dog somewhere on a planet, <laughs> millions of years away. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I want to believe there's sentient beings out there for sure. I feel like there are. Yeah, but who knows? I mean, dude, that whole you saw, I saw it from Joe Rogan. Um, who is my only source of information, but <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, uh, he, uh, he posted about how like UFOs are, they've admitted that UFOs are not from earth. There's not UFOs in general, but there's, there are ships that are not from earth. And they've said that, right. That's like recent, that's, right? That's like real. They said that yeah. and no one's talking about it. And that's, what I don't understand. Like, <laughs> why didn't that freak people out? Like everyone is just like, okay with everything. Just keep getting crazier this year. But it's like, dude, so if you had said that like two years ago or last year, people would be losing their minds probably. So I feel like, like I don't know media and news, fact and fiction is so blurred within like all of us in our homes getting everything from the. It's like, yeah, fifty percent of the population probably just thought it was bullshit, and fifty percent of the population was just like fucking knew it. You know what I mean? Like that's true. That's how the news works these days. Like. Or it's just they just move on to the next thing real quick. Yeah. But like that, I just felt like was kind of a, <laughs> when I read that, I was like, oh shit. Like, it's like, okay. yo, there's UFOs, bro. It's like, but have you heard WAP? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, man. 
I saw a really funny meme with that song too. Like kids bought people trying to rewrite that song. It's like they're all stressed <laughs> like, out and chain smoking and shit. Yeah, yeah so yeah, good. Super stressed out. Exactly. So good. Uh, I'm gonna open up for questions. If anyone has questions for Nick? We are coming to a close. Cool. I think. Is there anything you wanted to touch on? Uh, I mean, no. I think we covered pretty much everything I was thinking we might talk about. So this is a I fun. I guess the only thing I'll say is, uh, Head Cave might have something coming out pretty soon. Night Versus will have some updates on where we're at pretty soon, and uh, pretty much it. Really, I'm just otherwise just writing songs all the time. But yeah, you guys better have some yeah. shit coming out if you're writing 45 songs and. Dude, we got plenty. That's one thing I don't want people to think is like we're not doing stuff because we definitely are doing a lot. But I'm also just well, like writing all the time anyway. From another from another horse's mouth, like it's so fucking shot being in a band right now. Like it doesn't feel like I'm in a band. So weird. Yeah, we more or less would have been doing this anyway. So I guess I'm not feeling that burn as much because we wouldn't have been on tour. So we might have done one tour in like June. But that was the only thing that we were considering. And other than that, like it's probably the best time for us to not be touring. We so took a break. It kind of worked in our favor. Right before quarantine to record the album. So like this oh, was our easy. crunch time. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's like, it's weird, man. It's been over a year now <laughs> since I've toured. That's the long, uh, way. Uh, last one was February. Way longest break. Did you do a full tour in February? We went out to Europe and the UK and did a headliner for like a little under two weeks. And then that was it. That's sick. Sick though. How are you guys in Europe? It was fun for sure. We do pretty well. Uh, We actually sold out two shows that I did not expect. So that was pretty sick. Fuck yeah, dude. I mean, they were small. Like we're, I would say like, you know, maybe 200 ish people. And well, it doesn't matter and do that. If you sold it out, then you might have like, it might have been bigger. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> true, yeah, good point. yeah, selling um, out feels great, man. It's dope and it's cool. Yeah, like I was like being in another country doing that was like kind of a awesome kind of like milestone to hit. So I'm glad that that happened and hopefully we get back out there again. You know, was that that's uh, allowed your only t- first time in Europe? I guess that's what. No, we've been there a lot actually. Oh, okay. We did uh that was like our fifth fifth or sixth time, I think, going out there. Whoa. We've only been three. Um, yeah, dude. Night versus is we've done a lot of tours. Um and a lot of them were out there coincidentally, but uh it's cool. I mean, I'm always down to go out there for you know, when that stuff makes sense. I don't really like flying that much and I hate that those flights are so long, but once you're there it's not it's, it's worth it. Have you done Asia or Australia? No, I dread those for sure. Yeah, if you think those flights are I'm long, down, I'm down to not do those. <laughs> you say that, like, but I those are Japan. Those are Japan and Australia are still my top tour destinations, hands down. We've done Japan twice now, and like I could, awesome. I could move there, especially for guys like me and you. Like I know, like really tech driven. Um, we love video games, music, like it's fucking, it's another world, man. And like, yeah, I've heard the best things about Japan within sure. Tokyo. You have like your, your, <laughs> your district nine type quadrants, you know what I mean? So there's like an anime quadrant, a video game, qu- like it's wild. It's so cool. Um, that's rad. Yeah. It's so sick. Go immediately. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll just go there with my girlfriend or something instead of the band if we don't if if this doesn't come back as like a touring situation because i wonder you know oh don't say that dude other countries have their (laughs) well hopefully other countries have like things happening so that venues don't disappear but i feel like the u.s is gonna be pretty hurt by the lack of bands coming through because dude think of all the and like yeah we can wrap up soon so i won't get too crazy no no no. i i have i have no i'm i feel bad for keeping you oh no it's all good i'm gonna i gotta head out to eat dinner anyway but uh there's basically all these venues that are like the mid-sized venues, like Chain Reaction and stuff like that by me, which, do you know Chain Reaction? Yep, played it. You guys play there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. So, like, that kind of venue, I guess they're probably okay still, but there's venues like that that I wonder, you know, around the U.S. where it's like, if they start closing, that's going to really complicate the mid, small to mid-tier band. 
that is trying to tour because they're not going to have places to play or the new places they're going to play are going to be like, you know, maybe not as good. Like who knows though? I mean, I'm, I'd rather be optimistic about it, but I feel like it is what it is. Like there's going to be some yeah, changes I mean, that happen by the time it comes back. But let's be real. I mean, and I don't think it's going to come within a metal band. We've been playing different venues all across the country just because the genre as a whole is tough to keep up with. You know what I mean? Oh um, yeah. It's just going to get more complicated. Also, if you guys are going to have like more driving, if you stuff. guys have questions, ask them now. Cause we're going to come to a close pretty soon. But, um, it's cool. You guys don't have to ask me anything if you don't want to. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> this is a long one. I think we lost some, some people along this, uh, along this ride, but I also, I, I upload these to YouTube. So this is like immortalized in a way. And like, I'll give you a link to that later. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I also just realized as I'm looking at the stream how choppy my camera is. So my bad. I usually use a a better camera, but <laughs> from my end, the face, the my laptop camera looked all right. But like as I look at it on the stream, it actually looks kind of choppy. I think it's uh whatever. I don't think <laughs> it hasn't been that bad. I haven't noticed anything. I mean, you're not like all you right, know cool. headbanging or anything. But my my yeah. point to close is. I completely agree with you, but once bands do start touring again, that's a huge market. And all, I mean, it, let's get down to like brass tacks. All anyone wants to do is make money. So someone with a deep pocket yeah. is going to fill that market. Sure. So it's kind of like once things are available to tour, if there aren't any venues to fill that market for like cash inflow, like someone's going to buy one, make one. Like it's going to happen. You know what I mean? Cause I don't think it'll disappear. I just think it'll be different. And I think there might be things where they limit the amount of people inside for a while or like people feel weird about going for a while. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, and that's like, why, like that. that's why I don't even think I want to tour for a while. Cause like, yeah, I want that shit figured out. <laughs> I don't want to be the guinea pig. I don't want to be the band. That's like, I don't want to be the first. It's going to put a big glass. A big like glass or plastic wall in front of the stage. Yeah, we might as well just that keep separates the crowd. We might as well just keep Twitch streaming at that point. You know what I mean? It's pretty much. Has has uh, Night versus Damn, Night versus Tab Book. Oh god, I feel so bad because I feel like this. I've been asked this a lot, but uh, yeah, dude, you no, already said you used Tabit. You fucked that. yourself. Where where's the tabs at, man? That's true. Dude, Tabit doesn't export that well though, and people are so used to Guitar Pro that like if you export tabs from Guitar or from Tabit, they don't look right. But uh, yeah, I will. I will get on that. I do would like to get a tab book out. I think uh, Night Versus could have a couple tab books. I might do one for Head Cave too. We'll see. Hey, do, have you talked with but, the guys? Uh, I have been asked that a few times. Uh, Sheet happens at all? Sheet happens. Um, yeah, I've talked to Luke a couple times, and not recently, but he was asking me about it for the last record when it before it was coming out, and I kind of dropped the ball about like finalizing anything, but we talked about doing it. Um, I think I'll just probably record myself playing every song and then just send that to them or something, or I'll tap Ooh. it out and tap it. Damn. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> Big dog. Know. Whatever's easier. I guess that was the only question. People are gonna be watching the YouTube later and be like, "Oh, I want to know this." Blah 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 blah. But they have your Twitch now. <laughs> they can they can go ask you to your face through the internet. True. Sure. Nick, this has been awesome, dude. Thank you, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, of course. Was, uh, um, cool talking. Anytime you ever have any thoughts and you want to come back, just let me know. I'm always down. Sounds good. Yeah, dude. Get a uh, get on Warzone. Hit me up. All right, I, I probably will. I need to. Well, I need to I actually get rid of my PlayStation, <laughs> but I have to buy a PlayStation and then hit you up. Get it on PC, dude. It's crossplay. Is it really? Yeah. All right. You'll just be better than me because you'll have a mouse. And yeah, I don't get that. What do you? But... How does that work? It sucks. <laughs> it sucks going against yeah, people right. that are on a mouse because they're always better. Yeah. All right. I'll totally. Yeah, I'll totally do that. I'll do that with you. Yeah. It's tight. Uh, go enjoy your dinner, dude. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Later, Sean. See you, homie.